Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Olisi Nube. Uh, I'm here today uh, in an organization called African Development Consortium. Uh, it is a non-profit company and it's headquartered here in Johannesburg. Today we are talking to one of the proprietors or the main brains behind this organization. His name is Butolezo Nyati. He's going to explain to us the reason behind this organization. They've also got a, a business or rather should I say a conference that is coming up for Zimbabweans who are based here in South Africa who want to relocate back to Zimbabwe or those who want to invest back to Zimbabwe. Mr. Nyati, welcome to the show. Thank you very much Mr. Nube for having me uh, in your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, perhaps you can maybe lay uh, the ground as to what the African Development Consortium is and the reason behind this initiative. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, basically, the African Development Consortium uh, is a, an organization that uh, actually um, transitioned from the Migrant Workers Association. We formed the Migrant Workers Association in 2011 and registered it as an NPO with the social development. Um, but we have decided to narrow it uh, in terms of uh, uh, the people that are leading so that we do not uh, have a lot of uh, work in terms of uh, um, running up and down because with the Migrant Workers Association we realized that there were too many people and sometimes we call for a meeting and people don't turn up and that really made us not to move anywhere. Uh, basically, the Migrant Workers Association started a long time ago. It actually started around myself. Um, I came to South Africa in 2003. Uh, and uh, got a refugee status in South Africa. I trained in Zimbabwe as a professional nurse and uh, to practice nursing in South Africa one needs to actually uh, register with the South African Nursing Council. So the struggle that I, I underwent in terms of uh, registering with the South African Nursing Council made me to actually uh, try to organize the nurses. So we had two groups. We had a group that was organizing the nurses, uh, which was led by myself, uh, with people like Ofochun Nube. Um, and we had a group that was uh, organizing the teachers. And the teachers were actually assisted by one of the prominent unions in South Africa, and they managed to register with SES, and they started practicing within the education system in South Africa. So um, the struggle that I went through to get registered with the South African Nursing Council made me to start a small group of nurses. It has grown now. We have got more than 500 uh, nurses that are in the groups, uh, different groups that I lead. Um, and most of them actually managed to get registered, especially after the uh, dispensation permits that were given in 2010. So in 2011, uh, we formed an organization, you remember in 2008, with some xenophobic attacks where people ran to different places. Here in Johannesburg, we followed people to Alexandra Police Station, we followed people to Jimstein, and some ran to the Central Methodist in Johannesburg. So myself, the Bishop of the Central Methodist Church, Bishop Paul Bereni, and a friend of mine called Evans, unfortunately passed on, uh, we started discussing the issue of forming an association um, of workers. So we started the association and we approached COSATU. We started sitting uh, in a committee called the Vulnerable Workers Task Team uh, under COSATU in 2014. And uh, we did a lot of activities. One of the main activities that we did was to assist people with information. We were giving information around issues of uh, migrants, you know, in South Africa, whether it's uh, uh, social issues, uh, economic issues, work-related issues, and so forth. And then, um, unfortunately, things did not go the way I, uh, we wanted them to go, as I said, because our idea was to get the migrants to come together, pull their resources together, not only financial resources, but also to pull resources in terms of human capacity, because we have always believed and we still believe that um, coming together will give people, um, you know, 
security will give people a voice will make people benefit from each other because there are things that uh, you know people different people have that when they come together they can share those skills they can share the knowledge and they can share whatever they want to share so that they can grow together as a collective so when we realized that the migrant worker association was not achieving its objectives the same people that were in the migrant worker association just a few of us uh, I think we're left now being about, uh, 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 you know, the admin staff. We were about three or four in the office. We then partnered with South Africans and formed a company called Gemmec Projects. Some of you might know me from Gemmec Projects, where we trained uh, uh, caregivers. Uh, we have trained plus minus 400 caregivers. We have trained um, uh, people on a qualification that is promoted by the Department of Health called health promotion officer qualification with 76 people including some that were coming from the clinics around Johannesburg uh, who wrote on the 20th of October they wrote their uh, external uh, assessment and we believe that uh, they will pass the last uh, pass mark that we got in March 2022 was 96% for this college the GEMMEC projects so we, we decided to form GEMMEC projects because people were not coming together to pull their resources together and we needed to survive. So we formed a private company that uh, started training people and we've survived up to now. So we have decided to go back to the area of organizing migrants. That is how the African Development Consortium was formed. But this time we decided that we are not going to just go around like what I did in 2011 where I ran from Pretoria to ask for people's IDs. Some of the people were South Africans. Uh, I asked for their IDs to register the NPO and they never pitched even for a single meeting. That was very, very disappointing. So we didn't want to make the same mistake. So we have formed the African Development Consortium and uh, it is a, an organization that aims to initiate uh, developmental activities or projects starting in South Africa and growing them into Africa. We believe that we are in the next few years, we will be in some countries in Africa. We are not only going to be in South Africa. We are already having an office in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. From Zimbabwe, we are going to Zambia. From there, we jump to Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya. We come back to Malawi. We have created a corridor from South Africa right up to Rwanda. So that is what the, micro, uh, the African Development Consortium is about. We have got different projects that we are engaging in, and one of them is to organize the migrants, hence the conference that you spoke about. Okay, uh, from your experiences with Mwasa, it seems that there has been a challenge, or there are some challenges trying to organize, especially migrant workers. Why is that uh, the case? since we know that migrant workers are the most exploited, especially here in South Africa. Why are they, not, why are they lethargic when it comes to organizing themselves? It's unfortunate, uh, Mr. Nube, that uh, uh, people uh, you know, don't understand the importance of being proactive. Even right now, as we talk about the African Development Consortium Conference that is coming, we are being proactive. We are you know, looking at the future. So people sometimes look at the present. We, we had a lot of people coming to us at the Migrant Worker Association with a lot of problems. Some will come in with a problem that requires, uh, you know, a, maybe a financial support of about 10,000 rands. And we were asking people to pay a flat fee or a once-off fee of 150 per year. Imagine if somebody comes to us having been fired at work and the case needs a lot of money for us to hire a lawyer. And the lawyer will not charge us 150 rands, and the person contributes 150 rands. If we had pulled together the resources, we're going to be having a pool of money somewhere. When the person pays the 150 rands, we're going to take the money from somewhere and give it to, to, to the person to resolve their situation. So it's unfortunate that people do not become proactive, they become reactive. So I'll give an example about the teachers and the nurses that I spoke about earlier on. After the teachers were organized by a friend of mine called Limugani um, Moyo, most of them, they actually vanished. They went and they worked in different, uh, different schools. They started earning money. They established their families or brought their families from Zimbabwe and somewhere in Pumalanga. 
when Pumalanga Department of Education stopped them and some of them, the problems there to renew their contract, they came back to us. But after we had organized them, they forgot about us. Same with the nurses. Uh, after we assisted them to get registered, they did not understand the importance of, you know, remaining together and working together and building uh, based on what we had already started. So what is remaining right now is uh, various WhatsApp groups. Uh, whenever they've got problems, they still come to those WhatsApp groups, raise, sometimes they inbox me and uh, I do assist where I can. But you know, to assist people sometimes requires resources, especially financial resources. And without money, things don't move. They can move, but they might not move at a rate that you want them to move. So it's unfortunate that uh, migrants do not really understand the importance of coming together. Let me just give uh, one last example about what we attempted. When we started sitting at the uh, Vulnerable Workers Task Team at COSAC, we were advocating for the establishment of uh, what we called the migrant desks within the affiliates of COSAC. We believed that Kosato had a, 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 a footprint, you know, all over South Africa, and it had capacity to actually represent our people properly. We tried with a, a few um, affiliates of Kosato to say, can we get, um, you know, migrants to affiliate, to con contribute and subscribe to those unions? A lot of them did not uh, respond positively to our call. So with that, you know, uh, the affiliates were not going to be able to assist us to establish or, or, or have these migrant desks in their offices, saying Deben, we needed to have a migrant desk within uh, the offices of one of the affiliates of COSATO, so that whenever people in, uh, are having challenges in Deben, we can easily refer them to that migrant desk. And it was going to be a migrant desk that was not going to be only looking at labor-related issues. The unions were going to uh, take care of the labor related issues we were going to take care of the other aspects like the social issues and so forth right now we've got our people dying all over south africa some people are buried without the knowledge of their relatives and that was going to be our responsibility but our people did not understand that and that is very very unfortunate uh, there is an outcry here in south africa that migrant workers uh, are taking jobs that give them I mean, that pay them almost peanuts there's a lot of exploitation. Some migrant workers work without contracts. Others get easily dismissed because they don't have any contracts. And South Africans mostly are crying out that they are now not being employed because migrants can take anything because they are not constituted under any worker movement. Do you think these calls are, are well placed? Or this outcry that because think, they are not I, well constituted. Yeah, I think to a certain extent the, 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 the South Africans are, uh, um, uh, are correct uh, because uh, the reason why we were invited into the Vulnerable Workers Task Team, they, they wanted to address that. The South Africans wanted to address that. They wanted the, and they liked our approach because our approach was not to separate the workers. We did not want to form a, 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 a separate union exclusive for migrants. We wanted to form, uh, we wanted the migrants to get into the South African unions so that they can be protected. We understood the vulnerabilities of migrants. The South Africans understood. And I don't agree with people that say South Africans don't like us. I, I work with South Africans. I've worked with South Africans. I have South Africans around me. I, I told you earlier on that we partnered with South Africans to form a, 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 a private company in order to sustain ourselves. Uh, in government, I've worked with South Africans. They don't really discriminate. Yes, they'll be knowing that I'm coming from outside. They might not say, but uh, in reality, for, from what I've experienced uh, as a person, I don't think that it is true. There might be certain people that actually uh, have certain sentiments. Uh, we don't know what might be driving. For instance, the issue of unemployment that you alluded to might be making people to be angry. And, you know, it's, it, it might be something that, uh, they, you know, because their emotions are informed by their suffering. If a person is unemployed and they see somebody who is employed, who is coming from outside, they might feel angry that they are being deprived of an opportunity. Uh, so um, when they invited us to the Vulnerable Workers Task Team, they actually wanted to address the issue that you, you have mentioned. 
and I, I and unfortunately we did not manage to get to a stage where by uh, migrants were going to be covered under the umbrella of the unions. And then on to ADC now, who are the main constituents, the, the people, I mean the constituencies that members are drawn from? The, the, the African Development Consortium is formed by some South Africans. Uh, we, we, we have got uh, uh, three directors who are South Africans and we have got uh, um, migrants as well, just one or two that are part of the directorship of the African Development Consortium. Like I said, this is a, a developmental uh, uh, initiative. We are looking at establishing a base here in South Africa. So the South Africans form part of the stakeholders in the project. But we are looking at getting migrants organized so that those that will go back to their countries of origin, they establish developmental activities in their countries of origin that will keep them in those countries. We have, um, we are going to talk about the conference, but it is part of what we are working on to organize migrants and try to get them back to their countries. But before even getting them back to their countries, when we are still the Migrant Worker Association, one of the proposals that we took to some of the people that we presented to was to uh, say, why don't we partner migrants and locals and facilitate migrant skills transfer? Because we have a lot of migrants who came here, we have got skills that are making them to be alive and, uh, you know, um, to, to, to sustain themselves, uh, to achieve so many things. So those skills can be transferred to locals. I'm a nurse, I'm a professional nurse. The organization that I am running, the company that we decided to form, trains caregivers. So a group of nurses decided to transfer their skills to locals in the area of health care. So we are training people as caregivers and they go around to do basic nursing care. So that is the kind of uh, arrangement that we are proposing. And we were saying that later on, we can then bring in uh, people that uh, uh, can do assessments, you know, on those people that would have acquired new skills and give them certificates. Unfortunately, the people that listened to us did not really take our proposal and run with it. Okay, and is ADC in terms of, in terms of membership, is it a membership-based organization or you train people and you release them or you just deal with them and then you release them? We have got two arms in the African Development Consortium. We have got the administrative or technical support uh, team that is actually office-based. Um, they, they consist of people that, are come, that come in sometimes as experts uh, just to play a certain role. Uh, so we are building office capacity or administrative capacity so that the masses that we are mobilizing on the other arm, uh, organizing of migrants. I'll give you an example, Mr. Nube. Imagine a situation if we are to uh, organize plus minus 5,000 to 10,000 uh, migrants in Hillbrow across a national divide in Hillbrow. And every month they put together, you know, like in church, throw in 20, 20 rents. If they are 5,000 uh, and they meet fortnightly, they will be able to throw in, uh, uh, you know, 20 rents each times 5,000, it will give them 10,000. If they meet again towards end of the month, they throw in 20 rents, they will get 10,000 again. So it means per month they can pull 20,000. With 20,000, there's a lot that they can achieve. They can even establish their own office in Hilpro. That will serve them across so many needs that they have. People are having so many challenges, social challenges. You hear of people killing each other in Hilpro. You hear of people jumping uh, uh, um, off flats in Hilpro. You hear people end ending up indulging in criminal activity. Those are all social ills that are caused by this organization. So one of the critical elements of uh, ADC is to organize the unorganized. We have remained unorganized for a very long time. And it is this time, now that Dudula is actually saying Zimbabweans must go, perhaps Zimbabweans will wake up and realize that if they had organized themselves like the Somalians, if they had to organize themselves like the Nigerians, if they had to organize themselves like the Pakistanians, if they had to organize themselves like the Malawians, because I'm aware of a Malawian organization, 
they were not going to be they were going to be engaged by members of Tutula and they were going to present a plan because it is time that we start to present a plan on how are we planning to go back to our countries of origin because the South Africans are saying we are taking their space and they might be correct in that we might try to play around and be emotional and, and think that um, you know if you run away from your burning house you run next door the most noble thing or prudent thing to do is to pick up buckets and go back to your house and try to extinguish the fire and begin a rebuilding process. So what we have with some migrants is that they ran nested door and they became too comfortable. And I'm not going to be apologetic about, about that. We see people that insult us. Some right now in this video, they are going to be calling me names, but I don't really care because I think I've, I've passed that stage whereby I get affected by insults. I used to get insulted when I was trying to organize people long, long time ago. They would insult me when I'm hailing in Hilbro, calling people to organize themselves. So I'm still doing that. Those insults did not stop me and they're not going to stop me now. Uh, there is a migrant out there who is listening and is interested in participating in the activities of ATC or benefiting from the initiatives that is rolling out. How, what do you advice that they do how do they get in touch with you and what do they need to provide for them to be considered or brought under the ATC ban? We, we have started a, a, an online a database building a process so that we can accommodate migrants who are you know scattered all over South Africa or Southern Africa so people can go to our website the African Development Consortium website is African www.africandevelopment.co.za. There is a part where they click on contact. It has got a form that they can fill. And when they press submit, it exports their details to a, an Excel spreadsheet that we are able to access. Their information is going to be kept confidentially in line with the Copy Act. Uh, of South Africa. We don't share their information with people that should not have access to that information. So we have got, I think what you can do, Mr. Nube, is to actually put the link on your on your um, uh, YouTube channel so that people can actually uh, click on the link and uh, populate that form. That form gathers so much information about the people. It actually asks them what services are you interested in. It asks them um, uh, their geographical location. It asks them their age group. It asks them their skills. It asks them to tell us what other thing that they want to tell us in the comment session. We believe that that information will help us to customize our uh, services uh, and, and make sure that whatever we do, we actually uh, meet the needs of the people. We don't want to be providing a service that uh, does not speak to the needs of the people. So we are asking people to visit us also. We are situated in the CBD of Johannesburg, not very far from the MTN tax rank. We are on the fifth floor uh, at number 112 Kirk Street at a building called Josie Housing. People can visit us, but we prefer that people also put an appointment because there are so many things that are running here. We don't want people to come here and we don't have enough time to, to attend to them. So it will be better for them to use our contact details. Uh, my WhatsApp number is 60 311 uh, I'll repeat the number again, 60 311 And we are at number 112 Kerak Street in the CBD of Johannesburg. We are on the fifth floor. You've already mentioned something that sends shivers down, especially Zimbabwean spines, uh, the expiry of the Zimbabwe exemption permits. How does a ZP, ZEP Walter, who is out there, who is contemplating a future, get to benefit from the programs of ATC? 
Thank you very much, Mr. Nobe, for asking that question. Very critical question for me. Uh, I've been uh, involved in the process of, uh, um, you know, um, seeing these permits uh, for quite some time. When people were applying for DZPs, we assisted them through our office. Uh, we also assisted them to change from DZP to ZSP. And we also assisted them to change from ZSP to ZEP. So we have got people that we served and they are in our database we uh, are in contact with those people and we are aware that a lot of them are having challenges to renew their permits because they do not qualify for the skills that the south africans want so one of the things that actually um made uh, us to convene this conference that is coming is some of my colleagues that we i have been working with and um, they are affected as well and they are migrating back to zimbabwe voluntarily because they are grown up men members uh, they are actually leading families so they've said that they don't want to be humiliated one day to be picked up in the street and put in a kumba kumba because tina is migrant a migrant workers association or adc we, we we suspect that next year is not going to be easy for migrants there is likely there is a likelihood of mass deportation of our people i think we have seen police officers you know sort of um practicing and going around where they involve home affairs you see metropolis you see uh, saps there we saw recently the minister of home affairs actually allowed um, the, the, Roma, the SAPS to actually stop and arrest people that are not documented. So we suspect that next year people are going to be deported. So those that have got um, expiring uh, ZTP uh, by the end of 30 June uh, 2023, those that have not uh, changed to the new permits, we are here to say to them, it is important for you to consider going back to your country with your dignity still intact than to be deported. Hence, we are starting to organize people into various projects. We have got groups. People have organized themselves into groups that are interested in agriculture. People have organized into groups that are interested in mining, in construction, in hospitality, in services sector, and so forth. So people can approach us and we will put them into those groups. We have just had on the 29th of October, which is last month, our first training on business leadership and entrepreneurship skills. We are going to be training people on those skills and formalizing their businesses. Because we have realized that the reason why a lot of people jump out of their countries of origin is because they do not have anything to do in those countries. So we are saying to people, those that want to go back to their countries, come and join us in organizing ourselves so that we go back in an organized manner. We go back with our dignity still intact. That is the purpose of this conference that we are going to be having. We are having South African government officials coming in there. We are having uh, some interested stakeholders coming in there. Actually, we are having a senior a director in government, the acting director, deputy director general in charge of immigration national. He's coming to address that conference. So, so for those that won't be able to attend the conference, they can follow us on social media, but we will have a lot of post-conference uh, um, activities. One of them will be business facilitation. And we continue to gather people onto the database that I spoke about. You've already spoken uh, or answered my next question. It's about the conference. You've spoken about it. Can you expand further? Tell us where it is exactly, the date and the time, and the who is expected to attend. Okay, the conference is going to be held on the 10th of um, November, which is next week, Thursday, at Beachwood Hotel. Uh, the people that are going to attend, they've already booked their tickets because we are using the ticket system for people to come through. Um, we are going to be having the acting uh, Deputy Director General uh, in charge of uh, immigration from the Department of Home Affairs uh, and we are having uh, delegates from different uh, interested parties. Some are organizations that are dealing with the migration issues uh, and so forth. And the main thing, actually the name of the uh, conference is uh, Zimbabwe Repatriation and Investment Conference. Um, we are going to be talking about uh, uh, investment 
uh, encouraging South Africans that are going to be coming in uh, to actually consider expanding their businesses to Zimbabwe and we are going to be uh, encouraging partnership between Zimbabwean business people and South African business people so that those that are going to go back to Zimbabwe will actually start to do certain economic activities to grow the economy of Zimbabwe so that they can remain within Zimbabwe because most of the people that have actually jumped the border jumped because of challenges that came with the economic uh, meltdown in Zimbabwe. From the Zimbabwean side, government side rather, who will be there? We we got a message yesterday that they are going to confirm sometime next week, uh, but we have already uh, started making movements. So whether the Zimbabwean government officials are going to be there or they are not going to be there, we are going to continue. We are happy to see that the Zimbabwean government has given a, a statement regarding um, their preparedness to welcome people that are going to voluntarily repatriate or those that are going to be deported. We are going to be talking to them. We have vis My colleagues have visited the cons consular general. They had a meeting with, uh, with her at East Gate and she showed commitment that uh, we are going to be supported and we believe that they are going to support our activities, including the conference. Uh, Mr. Nyati, thank you very much uh, for your time, but is there anything that you would like to add to what we have said in this conversation? My main point uh, is to say to Abantu Bas Zimbabwe, Bantwagiti Kubalu Legi Lutis Lang and Samakana, Sibamba Nen. Ikoningo meta as Bamba Nen Sibemoya Muni si Fanela Machu. You know, uh, Ingo Malay, Ibonis Guti, Utbal Legal Guti, Abad Bamba Nebe, Slang and Samakanda Bay, Slang and Samar Zosis Abu, Benze Uti, among organizations, I found a lot to do like another target. Because as target Tilem Uti, we are disorganized. If we were organized, we're even going to be in a position to even a call to order our brothers and sisters who are committing crime because they are tainting the name of migrants, they are tainting the name of Zimbabweans. So I'm calling upon Zimbabweans across tribal divide, across political divide, to say, let's come together. I'm calling upon migrants across nationality divide to say, let's come together and unite and try to come up with projects that will see us ultimately going back to our countries of origin, because that is where our dignity is. That is where we will feel happy. So going forward, uh, I'm calling upon people to come together. We are in the process of, of organizing the unorganized, so people must join us. Thank you very much. There you are, ladies and gentlemen. The clarion call is for us to organize ourselves, come together, meet whatever challenges we have together, develop ourselves together, grow ourselves together. Please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. Thank you.